All right. Um, we're here with Jose Bravo in San Diego, California. Um, and we wanted to ask you about the frontline struggles and issues here on the border. Okay. Well, I'm Jose Bravo. I'm the executive director of the Chess Transition Alliance. And some of the frontline struggles that we're dealing with on the border right now are still a lot of the issues of immigration, the repression by immigration and naturalization. And um, the actual stopping of vehicles by um, police and then turning folks over to INS or ICE. Um, so those are some of the things that are happening here. Another thing that we're, is happening in Tijuana and on the, on the Mexican side of the border, um, the, a group of Ciudadanos Pro Parque was just able to recover a, a major park in Tijuana. Um, there are five green spaces in Tijuana, and there's three, 23 maquiladora parks in Tijuana. And they wanted to take one of the five green spaces away and make a parking lot and a shopping center. So the community, there was young people there in, um, living in tents for over a year. And just last week, the government declared that they would not take the park away from the people of Tijuana. Another issue that we're fighting is um, that there's a proposal to put in a nuclear power plant in Ensenada. And that nuclear power plant, of course, brings everything that other nuclear power plants bring, which is danger, hazardous waste, hazardous materials, and a place for confinement of the radioactive um, waste. So um, there is no plan for any of that. And construction wants to start very soon, and the communities in Tijuana, Rosarito, Ensenada, and Mexicali are coming together to fight that nuclear waste plant, or nuclear power plant, sorry. Um, another issue that is on hold right now is that Sempra Energy from here, from San Diego, uh, put a natural gas um, um, depot on the way to Ensenada, right on the beach. And uh, they have spent about $30 million to put together um, this um, liquefied natural gas depot. And um, it turns out that information now says that Sempra Energy had accepted or had given money to some of the officials in Mexico um, to accept that um, project. The community does not want it because it's a mega plant that they plan to put on site. And it's an issue of environmental justice because it's in an area that um, could pose dangers to people and the environment. What about the uh, struggle over here on, uh, on, in Mecca? The struggle in Mecca is, um, we found out about it about two weeks ago. Mecca is a little farming community in the Imperial Valley. Um, and the Cabazon Indian Reservation has accepted uh, a, a waste dump, a hazardous waste dump. It's already been operating and it's not permitted. It's not permitted by the state or federal government. And um, it has been operating, taking in military waste and other type of wastes from San Diego primarily and Los Angeles County. And one of the issues there is that people, the, the dump is not far away from the community of Mecca and children in the school are already getting sick. So tomorrow morning, uh, this is Thursday night that I'm talking to you. So tomorrow morning we're gonna meet in Mecca and we're gonna do a environmental justice bus tour of that area, the eastern side of, the, of Imperial Valley. And we're gonna talk to the community members and we're gonna start a campaign around this issue of contamination. Now, the preliminary reports that are out there and a letter that we're asking people to sign on to already indicates that this is the most egregious toxic waste issue in the state of California and possibly nationally because of the amount of hazardous materials going to that site. And um, the community has already worked with the um, Imperial Valley um, education system, the, the school system, and the school system has come out against the dump. So now our job is to bring other communities along and help support the issues there in Mecca. What are some of the health impacts? Some of the health impacts that are, people are having again are um, 
airborne problems. Um, there's a lot of uh, very different smells that are coming out of the site. People are getting sick. The children are getting sick at the school. Um, so tomorrow we're going to learn more in depth from the people there about what some of the other health issues are. But as far as I understand it, um, there's breathing problems and there's issues of air contamination so far. So do you think that, um, you know, uh, progress has been done by EPA or the Mexican authorities in terms of uh, furthering cleanups or, you know, solving some of these problems with uh, contaminated sites? Well, it's, it's interesting that you ask that because since, nine, since before 1994, since before the free trade agreement was signed with Mexico, Canada, and the United States, we have been highlighting issues along the Mexico-U.S. border of massive amounts of contamination, uh, worker repression, issues of exploitation of both the environment and people, and those issues still persist. One of the things that we are seeing here in Tijuana is that more maquiladoras are closing shop here and moving to Asia. So a lot of those companies that are moving to Asia are leaving whatever they had here in, in the border behind, just like other companies have done for years and years. So they're leaving the contamination behind. Many of them are just leaving the contamination behind, leaving people without paying them, um, leaving, and, and workers have to um, take um, hold of the plants, whatever they leave behind, to see if that they can sell it and then get partial restitution for their monies. Okay, so um, what, what would you send out as a message uh, to the people that are going to be uh, following our blog? I think that part of, part of the message that I want to send out is that these issues still are very prevalent in our communities. And we haven't had any relief on some of these issues, be it chemical exposure issues or air issues or, in this case, worker exploitation issues. And I think that workers need to unite and we need to see some of that responsibility that people had and coalesce with people in Mexico. Like right before the, United, the American free trade, North American Free Trade Agreement was signed, there was a lot of urgency to bring workers and communities in Mexico together. I still think that we need to bring that back and make sure that that happens and people understand that people in Mexico aren't about taking people's jobs away. They're about getting really horrible jobs and the companies are the ones that are taking people's jobs away. Thank you.